Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Grid. Now, it's been a while, but I've uh, been busy on this new little short called The Distant Drifter. And, uh, well, today we're going to be figuring out how to create a cool little energy grid effect where uh, it basically looks like this becomes fake or in some type of uh, alternate reality where you can touch things and they turn into uh, wireframe mesh, basically. So what that looks like is this kind of a cool little effect it's really quick really simple but if you notice on right here we've got a few little things we have the grid we have some glow we have lens flare and we have the hand over the grid to where it looks like it's in a 3d world uh, now this is the Distant Drifter promo. We are going to be creating a couple of episodes uh, based on the Distant Drifter, which is going to be, you know, something kind of cool, something fun, which uh, we'll be doing tutorials about all the effects that we do on the Distant Drifter. Also, if you guys can uh, check us out over at Avid Productions, facebook.com slash avidproductions, that would be awesome. You can see some cool photos we got of some of our clients as well as some more projects and uh, stuff like that, like the Distant Drifter. You can see the all the fun that goes on, uh, and that is www.facebook.com slash avidproductions479. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we have our footage already uh, kind of compiled up here, so you just basically drag that down and link it to uh, where you want it. And we got the uh, the footage right here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, cool. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is going to create a new layer. So we go to layer, new, solid. And we hit our black layer. And we actually want to create uh, maybe one of these colors. You can figure out what color you like best. I like this little, you don't want it too saturated, but you do want a little bit of color in there. So it's just like a little light blue. And hit OK. We're going to go over into our effects and presets, and what we're going to do is we're going to type in CC Grid, or actually, just type in Grid, Griffid, Grid. We will go down here to our grid layer, generate grid, and we'll just roll that on top of the grid line here. Now that creates us a nice little grid-like thing. So we've got our grid layer. Woo! All right. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to go ahead and just rotate this around. So we'll take this layer and we'll rotate it. And then we'll put it into 3D space. And then we will just kind of align this up. So we'll take our grid layer up and we'll go over here. Now we want it to kind of look like it's in the wall so we're gonna go ahead and scale this down a little bit so we'll just move this back in 3d space a little move it over and kind of rotate it on the x-axis a bit that way it kind of gives that 3d kind of look like it's coming at you and move it over And maybe scale it up just a tad. Back. All right, cool. We got a short little grid thing here going on. All right, now if you want it to uh, look a little, a little better than this, we can actually change uh, how many grids we have or how thick the border is. Uh, I don't really usually like doing that. I usually like doing uh, just a little bit thicker of a border, a smaller border like this. Uh, let's see here. Alright, this will do just fine. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to blur out this later. So we'll do Blur. We'll just go to Gaussian and roll that on top. Kind of blur that out a little bit. That way we have kind of a glowy look. And then we're going to go ahead and push this to Add. So now we have our background additive layer. So now 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and also make this a little bit opaque. So if you press T on the, I uh, will just actually rename this grid. Grid blur. I'm going to bring down the opacity just a tad. Right. Cool. Now we have that grid on there. Now we're going to go duplicate. So Control D, duplicate that. And then we're actually going to bring the blur level down. That way it gives us a little bit more of a solid line. Like that. And then go ahead and bring that opacity level back up. A little bit. And then go ahead and duplicate it again and bring it all the way down the Gaussian blur and the border down. Just a smidgen. Right about like that. All right, cool. Now we have that. Uh, one thing I do like to do is uh, go down to your bottom grid blur and you can actually change the color. Change it to more of like a, a bluish kind of color. Can do the same with the rest of the layers. You kind of want the hot center, which is going to be just keep it white. And there we go. Quick, simple, small, short grid. All right, now here's where the fun part comes in. Uh, there's the easiest ways to actually. Uh, rotoscope out or mask this out is either to go in to your pen tool and mask every single frame of her handout. But what we're going the easiest easiest way to do this is what's called roto brushing. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer and then we're also going to set it on top. So not only we're going to have this layer on the bottom, but we're also going to have it on the top. So we're going to go into our roto brush tool and that is up here and it's called the roto brush tool. So we'll hit that and we'll double click on our footage. This brings up our, uh, it's not a new composition, but the actual solid layer that this is on. Uh, this is the, the compiled footage uh, for the first layer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the thumb and her hand. Just go ahead and click and just drag this out and you can select her entire arm here. And that'll think and then you just kind of select everything you want to keep. And sometimes it'll get this stuff and I will show you how to get rid of all of that. So we've got just a few little things going on here. All right. And the way to deselect some of this stuff is you actually uh, press alternate and click and just deselect everything around her arm that you don't want because you're actually wanting to train this brush to think like your, uh, to think like you basically. Go ahead and select that back. Deselect all of this stuff here. Any of that. All right, awesome. This will work for what we are doing. All right, cool. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to press spacebar and it's going to think for us. So we'll go ahead and press spacebar. And already it is making our mask for us so we don't have to do it. It's a lot easier this way. Now, uh, it did kind of get off frame a little bit with her, with her uh, finger here. So what we're just going to go ahead and do, we're just going to uh, pause the footage. And then we're just going to go ahead and select that, what we want. And then go ahead, look, and make sure that we have everything we're needing here. Go ahead and get that in there. And then deselect the part we don't want. And that's looking good. And then press spacebar again. Everything's looking pretty smooth. Oh, right there. Got off on the thumb and just go through this footage and really make sure this is looking good because the smoother it is, the better it's going to look. All right. 
pretty sure I've got everything I want so I'm just gonna go ahead and scrub through this real quickly make sure everything's pretty smooth things looking pretty good alright let's go ahead and uh, let's look and see what this looks like on our composition so go back over to where it says composition over here and that will already be brought right back into our comp now it's, you can see that we've got some kind of janky looking uh, edges here which not gonna lie whenever you put it over the footage whenever it's moving fast enough you're not gonna see that uh, really harsh uh, edge whenever it's moving really quickly but if you want to kind of fix that what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and bring up our feather layer that will kinda just feather it out smooth it out a little bit smooth yeah that's gonna that's helping out a lot right there definitely that's looking a lot better and also whenever you feather it out you're gonna get a lot more of this glowy kinda look whenever it goes onto her hand so that's going to help out a lot. I'll feather that out just a little bit more. It's looking good. Thing there is looking good. That I'm not going to be too worried about. You can worry about it, but I really wouldn't. Not a lot of people are going to notice something like that. Um. All right. So we've got that going on. So we've got our roto brush. We have this energy grid kind of being wiped across the board. So what we're going to do now is we are going to mask. So we're going to go ahead and pre-compose our little grid here. So we'll go to composition, select all three parts of our grid and composition. Go to layer, pre-compose, yes and add cool alright now we are going to select our pre-composition and we're just gonna kinda mask this about so we are going to go ahead and select her hand here we're just gonna kinda put a small mask around her hand doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna be revealed from her hand or by her hand I have an email Go ahead and select her hand. Cool. All right, now we got that. So this is going to be revealed by her hand. So we are going to go hit M, M. I'm going to bring up our mask path. So we're going to go ahead and hit the time clock here. And we are going to animate. Everybody loves animation. All right, so we're going to go do this frame by frame. So we'll go ahead and click over here. Go ahead and click on our, whoops, and click on each of these keyframes that are going to be revealed. And we're just going to reveal them. Kind of move those over, move them to the alignment of the hand. Right, kind of like that. Move it over a frame and just keep doing the same thing pretty much. So just keep following along on uh, this hand deal about this reveal. And just really the guide is to follow the thumb but kind of follow it along as if that's where. Uh, the smear is so really I want this to be up a little farther All right, so we're gonna follow this kind of a guide so that's coming down and it's just gonna smear because we don't want to follow it down because if we follow it down it'll make all of our uh, keyframes from here follow that down so you don't really want to do that you want to basically just smear it on all right, go ahead and slip there, and those, and that. So now we have this. Zhushk. That looks terrible, but we are going to fix it. So 
You got this layer. Looks kind of cool. You got the smear going on. Yeah. All right. So we have that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to animate our expansion and feather. So we want to go ahead and feather this out a little bit, but we're going to actually keyframe the uh, feather and the expansion. So we're going to go out and we're just going to go ahead and feather this a little. So whenever it comes out, it's going to go ahead and feather that. That way, whenever it reveals, it reveals really subtly. So it looks really kind of cool. You see how these are feathered out a little bit. We're also going to add a couple more layers to this uh, that make it really pop. But uh, this is working out pretty well. So we'll go ahead and do this. And then we have the feather there. And then when it comes down, we're going to go right here in the middle. And we're going to change our expansion. So it's going to expand up to reveal that this has become this cool energy grid field and then the feather also is going to come up all right so now we have and it has become this cool energy field Kind of a cool little effect. Um, <clears throat> one thing you can also do <clears throat> is you can go to layer, whoops, layer, new, solid, and you can create a black solid. Okay, and then you can also go to uh, <clears throat> uh, fractals, fractal noise, fractal noise, which is this guy right here. And you can kind of put a little bit of animation to it. Uh, I like the threads. Well, not the threads. Which one is the uh, strings? There it is the strings. Make it really high contrast. Brightness. Bring that down. So you just have this really kind of thready looking, looking deal. Animate it a little bit. So go to the evolutions. Hit your stopwatch. And bring it back up to a few frames and just hit this at maybe two so you have this kind of cool little animation bring that down onto your pre-comp and then set your track mat on the black level your track mat and track that to the alpha mat of the grid and then do a tricolor or a tint, tint that the blue. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and hit add. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and hit duplicate on the other layer and we'll bring that down. And then we will also add that to it. Actually, go ahead and just delete that one. But now we have this cool little animated grid. And this cool little animated grid. I mean, it's not the most perfect of all grids, but it's a cool little, just a little bit more animation to kind of bring some life into that grid there. But cool little simple effect all right well this is just a simple one that I wanted to show you guys uh, feel free to add on to this but it's just kind of a neat way to create a little bit of an animated grid line uh, but anyway, my name's Cherokee uh, from Tutorial Grid. Also, check us out at the Avid Facebook. Make sure to like us, subscribe. There's going to be a lot more tutorials over the Distant Drifter. Hopefully, you guys liked it. Make sure to share it if you like it as well. Um, but anyway, I'm Cherokee at the Tutorial Grid, and you guys have a good one.